Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. If you were here last week, you'll know I made two different versions of Naruto headband. So this week I figured why not complete the look with a full cosplay of someone there's no demand for. <laughs> so I picked Rin Nohara. She is Kakashi's childhood friend. As you can see, the design is really, really simple. A lot of it is clothing that is just everyday items. I already have the t-shirt, shorts, and a pair of burgundy leggings, which aren't thigh highs, but they're close enough. So all I have to make today is the pink apron skirt and the shoes. If you came here looking for a Rin from Naruto split skirt design that is not only adjustable, but doesn't use zippers or snaps or buttons, then you've come to the right place. Let's jump in. Starting off, we're going to need two measurements. The first one being the circumference of your waist and the second one being the length that you want the skirt apron to go. So I believe it goes down to about her knee, sometimes above, sometimes below. The animation varies a bit. Now I'm going to pull out some pale pink fabric and cut out the pieces that I need, which are a back panel, a front panel, a waistband, and a drawstring. So while I do that, why don't I tell you how to make a pattern using your measurements? Starting with the back panel, the width will be half the circumference of your waist, and the length will be the length that you want the skirt to go down to. The front panel is the same width, but you add an extra 3 inches to the length. For the waistband, go ahead and cut out a piece that is 4 to 5 inches shorter than the circumference of your waist and 6 inches wide. Lastly, you can cut out two drawstrings, which should be about 3 fourths of the circumference of the waist and 2 to 3 inches wide. Alright, let me just show you what I have cut out. So there is the front piece and then there is the back piece that's the waistband and the two drawstrings now that my pieces are all cut out i'm going to start with hemming the sides of my front and back panels so i'm just going to do a small hem hiding that raw edge don't forget to use a thread that matches the fabric there's our nice clean hem you can see it's nice and small and practically invisible from the front side. Next, we're going to center the back panel onto the waistband and sew those together on one side. Keep in mind the direction of the fabric here because we will be bringing the top of the waistband over and folding it in half, hiding that seam. Now that those are attached, let's do what we just said we would and fold that waistband over on top hiding those raw edges inside, and we're just going to top stitch this edge together. Top stitch! <gasps> Alright, there we've got the backside of this split skirt apron done. There's the beautiful top stitch. I'm trying to make it nice and clean. Now we're going to do the drawstring. This will be really easy. We'll just sew these into tubes, flip them inside out, and then I also ended up just top stitching around the top of the outside. So let's get that done. Ah, uh, if only it was really just as easy as ringing a bell. <laughs> Anyways, here's a closer look at what I did. So I sewed it into a tube, flipped it in a side out, and there's that beautiful top stitch, except that edge. Don't focus on the ends of that drawstring, just on the main part. Nobody's gonna look at it anyways. Now we're just going to attach each drawstring to either end of the waistband. Don't forget to hide the raw edge. Wow. <laughs> I gotta say, it's looking pretty clean. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far. So all I have left to do is the front panel, which I'm going to have to put drawstring holes in and fold it into a waistband. First, I just marked where that top edge of my waistband is going to be, and then I marked where I wanted my drawstring holes. So I want them to be about an inch and a half long, because that's how wide my drawstring is, and I also want to make sure that they're the correct distance from the top of my folded waistband. Uh, 
I ran out of thread and I still have a lot more sewing to do so I'm gonna have to switch to one of these. It's definitely not the same but hopefully it won't be as noticed. Back to the drawstring opening. You see I tested it right here but I'm going to sew it as if it were a really large buttonhole. So here I have my buttonhole foot attached. Depending on your machine, you might have a big buttonhole maker like this, or, you know, a foot, some, like a sliding foot like this. Whatever type of foot you have, it doesn't matter as long as you can make it the length that you need for your drawstring to fit through. So you can even do this without a button foot, but I'm just using one because it's easier and I wanted to use one. So now I'm just going to cut it. All right, I'm just cutting those slits open. Careful not to cut into the stitch you just made. And I can finally fold this over and turn it into a little tube for the drawstring to fit through. All right, very last step is to hem the bottom the correct length, and we are done. Ta-da! There is our adjustable drawstring apron skirt that doesn't use any zippers, buttons, or hook and eyes. Now, to complete the cosplay look, all I have to do is make some shoes. Lucky for me, I have some pieces of that foam left over from the rainbow platform shoes, so I use that as a base for the naruto shoe these blue open-toed boots that they wear in naruto are very form-fitting so i'm just shaping around the shape of my foot and trying to get it as close as possible while giving me just a little bit of wiggle room while i'm cutting that out i have to warn you that the next few steps i actually came to after trying multiple different forms of this shoe <laughs> I really, really struggled with the design because I was trying to make it look like a professional shoe and have it be long-lasting. And you know what? It just wasn't practical for the amount of time I had and for the materials I was using. So the shoe design you're about to see won't be super long-lasting or look super professional, but it will be a super easy one that anybody could do. So to make this Naruto shoe, we're going to need some navy blue socks. These are extra long socks because I will be rolling them down to create that little roll fold that you see in the boot. And I will be shoving these soles inside the sock to give it some structure. We're going to cut off the toes on those socks because the boots are open-toed. And then I'm going to color match the foam to the color of the socks. I was going to sharpie it or paint it, but the sharpie came off. So I just grabbed a piece of dark fabric that I had that was the same color, and I just glued it on top. Yes, you can tell how exhausted I was at trying to make these shoes work at this point because I broke out the glue gun. <laughs> it's okay hot glue guns are every DIYer's best friend now that the stiff foam of my shoe is the right color i realized that i needed foam on the bottom because i would slip and slide if the fabric was on the bottom so i just traced out the shape of my sole on this thin black craft foam and cut it out and now we're just going to glue these pieces together in case you can't tell what i'm doing here i just slid the sock over that firm piece of foam and glued it down to it and then glued the black on the underside.
Yeah, this was my first time working with a green screen. As you can see, the little green screen pops up every now and then. Also, my hands keep disappearing and other body parts as well. But you know what? I was having fun with it. Trying to do that red pose. Anyways, that's the end of this video, so be sure to hit the like button if you liked this cosplay or if you like Rin. Comment down below if you liked the design I did for the apron and if you would use it just as a regular apron. Share this video with your friends who like to cosplay and please subscribe because I post every Friday after 3. Thank you for watching. Let's go! <laughs>